a student council election in the north, every four years, a massive magical beast attacks the fortress, significant support is provided from the center, and our Liberian Academy also lends a hand. During the second year general elective class on magical beast studies, the professor spoke. These beasts possess no rationality and are void of emotions like fear. Given that such an attack is anticipated this year, some of you might even be dispatched there. As I listened to the professor, I tapped my desk with my fingers. No, don't worry too much. The academy wouldn't put the students in too much danger, while students undoubtedly provide assistance. The main purpose of your involvement is to gain experience. It's, after all, we have numerous veterans experienced with these beast attacks. The professor seemed to think our grim expressions were due to fear. He couldn't be more off the mark. Noticing something was wrong, the professor glanced at the clock. Class had already exceeded its scheduled time by over minutes. Seeing the students' frustrated faces, the professor chuckled. Ah, look at the time. My apologies. We'll conclude today's lesson here. At his words, a collective sigh of relief spread throughout the class on the first day. We already had an extended lecture. This just won't do. I mumbled to myself. I contemplated dropping this course and taking another elective. Besides the royal politics course that Luna and I planned to sign up for, there were a few other electives to consider. But this one just didn't seem right. After all, my real opponents aren't monsters. They're people. There's no point in learning extensively about monsters. With that thought, I began to walk. The afternoon following the end of the class was bathed in the gentle warmth of spring, however. I had an errand to run. I exited the academy and headed towards a certain bakery. Oh, you're here. Rai, sipping her tea, greeted me at the bakery. Why meet outside? Couldn't we have just met inside the academy? The student council presidential elections were gradually approaching and it was time to start preparing. While sipping her tea with a sly smile, Ray responded, This place is delicious, right? Discussing matters over something tasty might lead to better ideas. This was the bakery where Rai and I had tea after school, although we didn't have tea at that time. I recalled the delightful snacks we had enjoyed. I took a seat opposite Rai. Do we even need better ideas? Frankly, there wasn't much to worry about for the upcoming election. There weren't any second-year students capable of running, and with Ray's reputation, the student council president's position was practically guaranteed. She smirked true. So, do you dislike having tea with me? Or are you planning to pick a fight? I apologize. I'll just quietly have my tea. I yielded, wilting under Ray's playful teas. Ray had decided to become the vice president. But I never saw her as someone subordinate to me. If Rai had truly run for the student council presidency, even I wouldn't be certain of victory. But Rai stepped back out of consideration for me. So, when should we get the recommendations from the professors? It's easy to get the recommendation letters. Just get them from Professor Robert and Professor McGuire. I'll take care of the rest. What about the other student council members? For the first year, that guy you mentioned, Kuhn, and a couple others should do. For higher positions, it's best to go with familiar faces like Locke and Luna. Luna has her teaching assistant duties, so she might be boozy. But it's always better if someone we know fills the higher roles. I was comforted by Ray's confident attitude. It seemed she had already thought through all the parts I was still wondering about. While we were on the topic of second-year students, Ray suddenly clapped her hands and asked, Speaking of which, why hasn't Yeniel come back? Huh? Yeniel hasn't come back, caught off guard by the unexpected question. My expression turned bewildered. I hadn't thought about Yeniel at all. She wasn't the type to stand out much anyway. Plus, since Astina had been overseeing matters related to Yeniel, I hadn't paid her much mind. You don't know either. I thought you'd know something. Could she still be with the rebels? Or something else? Seeing my worried face, recite. Maybe I shouldn't have mentioned it. If anything had happened, Astina would have told us. Since we haven't heard anything, let's just wait a bit longer. Nem. <laughs> Despite Ray's words, I couldn't shake off the unease. Still, Yeniel, being a former assassin from the rebels, I expected her to return somehow. 
but when I thought of the leader of the rebels, I couldn't help but feel anxious, noticing my frown. Ray waved her hands dismissively. Let's leave that topic. I've been curious about something else. What are you curious about? Ray then leaned forward, giving me a probing look. Is Yuna still flirting with you? Flirting? Describing Yuna's actions towards me as flirting made me chuckle. Of course, Yuna has blonde hair, but that's hardly relevant here. You said she confessed and you turned her down, so why does she keep sticking around you? I'm not sure about that either. I'm actually more curious. The fact that Yuni had confessed to me, everyone at the academy knew about it. It was bound to spread since the confession took place in front of so many people. Stay away from her. She's really shady and weird. Never ever ever get close to her. He warned me about Yuni with great emphasis. But she's your family. Oh my, what does being family have to do with anything? Just as she was about to respond. Someone suddenly interrupted from behind. I turned to see a beaming Yune. Ray jumped up from her seat, startled. Why are you here? It's not like I can't be here, right? Rudy, Yune glanced at me cheekily. Well, I suppose so. Utri's brow furrowed. Wait, Rudy, are you siding with her? I'm not really taking sides. She just is just stating the obvious, right, senior? Yune interrupted with a teasing tone of... Ray clenched her fist, glaring at me, while Yuni watched with a mischievous grin, however. Yuni then changed her tone, clapping her hands. I didn't come here to discuss that. I have something else to say. Ray narrowed her eyes, giving Yuni a displeased look. What do you want now? If you're heartbroken, stay in your room and cry like a tragic heroine. Why do you keep showing up? Mind your own business. This isn't about you. What are you to him? His lover? Lover, caught off guard by Yuna's words, Riz stepped back hesitantly. I might like him, but what are you to him? Nothing, right? Yuna's rapid fire questions clearly flustered Ray. I stood up, approaching Yuna, without holding back. I thumped Yuna on the head. Thump? Oh. Yuna clutched her throbbing head, tears forming in her eyes, and looked up at me in disbelief. Senior, I frowned at her. What are you doing? If you came to cause trouble, leave. But seeing her hesitation, I snapped, if you won't leave, then we will. I walked over to Rai and grabbed her wrist. Come on, wait. What? As I led Rai towards the exit, Yuni suddenly grabbed Rai's other wrist, stopping us. Don't go. I responded firmly, we're leaving. Please stay, we're going. Yuni and I began to pull on Ray's arms in a tug of her fashion. Oh, why are you suddenly doing this with me in the middle? Got in between. Ray's arms were being yanked from both sides. With a quick tug, I pulled Ray towards me. Towards me. Ah, uh, in doing so, Ray stumbled into my embrace. I steadied her, our eyes meeting. Are you okay? Oh, she appeared a bit dazed but didn't seem hurt. I gently let go of her and we continued walking forward when Yuna's voice rang out. I'm sorry. Uh, I turned to face Yuna, who had raised her voice. I apologize. Please, just hear me out for a moment. Yuna said with a somewhat embarrassed look. I let go of Ray's wrist and crossed my arms, staring intently at Yuna. Go on. I mean her voice trailed off as she cast a frustrated glance at me and I couldn't help but see a resemblance in her expression to rise. I had to suppress a chuckle, but I kept my stern demeanor. If I showed weakness now, it end up being pushed around by Yuni. I waited for her to continue. I didn't want to bring this up like this, but Amar gaze dropped, and she murmured something under her breath before looking back at me. I'm planning to run for student council president. What? Ah, I raised an eyebrow at her sudden announcement. She's considering the role of student council president. As a first year, it wasn't against the academy's rules for a first year to run, but it was unconventional. While the academy prided itself on its liberal environment, there were still traditions, typically, a second-year student would run for president on the rare occasions that a first year did run. Their chances of winning were slim. I have a strategy to win, the right people to help me, and am confident, Yuni said with determination. But if you, Rudy, were to date me, I won't run. 
if I don't enter the race, it would be much easier for you to secure the president's position. With that, Yuna extended her hand towards me, flashing a captivating smile. So, what do you say? Thank <laughs> you.